بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين This is major 2 of calculus 1 uh, term 221 Let us solve it together have a look The first question is about uh, derivatives Find the derivative or differentiate the following functions so what would be y prime here we will use the quotient rule because we have fraction so the quotient rule says if you have f over g and you need to find the derivative the formula says you write g you raise g to the power 2 then you find the derivative of f which is the numerator times g then minus f times the derivative of g which is the denominator so just use this formula so i have square root of x minus one in the denominator i will raise it to the power two then find the derivative of the numerator well derivative of x cubed is 3x squared you multiply that by two two is a constant so 3 times 2, 6x squared. This is f prime. Then you multiply by square root of x minus 1. That's g. Then minus, you write f as it is, 2x cubed. And you multiply that by the derivative of g, which is in the denominator. What is the derivative of square root? It is 1 over 2 square root times the derivative of what is inside. Well, the derivative of x minus one is just one. So that's the answer. You can cancel two with two and that's the answer. That's the derivative. Here we have product multiplication. So I will use the product rule. Product rule says that whenever you have two functions multiplied by each other and you need to find the derivative find the derivative of the first one times the second one plus the first one times the derivative of the second one. So what is the derivative of x plus 3 square root of x? Let me write y prime equals derivative of x is 1, 3 is a constant, and derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x, and the 3 is there. So 3 times 1 over 2 square root of x. This is the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function as it is times the derivative of ex, which is ex. Derivative of ex is ex, so that's the answer. Here I have a function raised to a function. Uh, there is no rule to find y prime here. So, but there is a method. The method is called logarithmic differentiation. I have to apply len to both sides to bring sine x down. So I don't have function raised to a function. So len y would be equal to len x plus 1 raised to the power sine x. But we know that uh, there are some properties of logarithms. One of them says that whenever you have len uh, u to the power r, for example, then you can write it as r times len u. You can bring r here. And that's what we need. So we will have len y equals, I bring sine x outside. So I'll have sine x times len x plus 1. And now I have product of two functions here. So I can find the, the limit. But to find the limit of the left-hand side now, the limit of len y, uh, uh, I mean the derivative. I can find the derivative, sorry. Uh, I will not be able to find y prime directly. I have to use now implicit differentiation. So what is the derivative of len y? Let us find the derivative of both sides of this equation. Derivative of len y, derivative of len is 1 over y, okay, times the derivative of y, which is y prime. So I'll have y prime over y equals... This is a product, so we use the product formula as we did just uh, 
two minutes ago, the derivative of the first function, derivative of sine x is cosine x times the second function plus sine x as it is times derivative of ln x plus one, which is one over x plus one times the derivative of x plus one, which is one. So that's it. So what would be y prime? I can find y prime now if I multiply both sides by y. So if I multiply by y here, y will be canceled with, with y, and I'll have y prime. And in the other side, I'll have cosine x times ln x plus one plus, I can write it sine x over x plus one, all of this times y. But what is y? It is x plus one to the power sine x. That's why. So this will be the final answer in terms of uh, x. This this is the derivative y prime. Uh, let us find y prime here. Here I need to use, I have sum of two functions, so I can find the derivative of the first function. To find the derivative of e to the power u, I have to use the chain rule. It says that derivative of e to the power u is e to the power u times u prime. So the derivative would be e to the power x cubed plus 4x times the derivative of x cubed plus 4x, which is derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, derivative of 4x is 4. Then plus the derivative of cosine. Well, also this here, I'll use the chain rule because I do not have cosine x, I have cosine u. Well, the derivative of cosine u would be negative sine u, then times u prime, you multiply by u prime. So derivative of cosine is negative sine u, which is 2x squared plus 5x, and then I multiply by derivative of 2x squared plus 5x, which is derivative of 2x squared is 2 times 2, 4x, subtract 1 from the power, then derivative of 5x is 5, and do not forget the parentheses here because uh, there are two terms here. So we need these two parentheses. So this is the derivative of, uh, of this function. Okay, another uh, derivative question, find y prime. Well, this is len u. So chain rule says derivative of len u is one over u times u prime. So y prime would be one over all of this as it is. Then I multiply by the derivative of seven x cubed, which is three times seven, 21 x to the power three minus one, which is two, then plus two times two, four x to the power two minus one, which is one. And the derivative of five as a constant is zero. If five alone, the derivative is zero. If it is multiplied by a function, then it is there and I find the derivative of the function. Find the equation of the tangent line to this curve at the point zero, zero. The equation of the tangent line is y minus f of a equals f prime of a times x minus a, where the point given, this is a and this is f of a. So a here is zero and f of zero is also zero. So in fact, I have y minus zero equals f prime of zero times x minus zero. So the equation is y equals f prime of zero times x. And now I need to find f prime of zero. To find f prime of zero, I find f prime of x. Well, this is y, which is f of x. So y is equal to f of x. So let us find the derivative of y. I have product, 2x is the first function, ex is the second function. So use the product formula. Derivative of 2x is two times ex plus 2x as it is, times derivative of ex, which is ex. And now what is f prime of zero? So I replace x by zero. e to the power zero is one, two times one would be two. Plus, if I replace x by zero here, I'll have two times zero times one, so it is zero. 
So if prime of zero is two, and the equation would be y equals two x, that's the equation of the tangent line. Consider this function and find the derivative dy by dx. dy by dx is also y prime. Well, this is implicit differentiation. So let us find the derivative of the of this equation. Derivative of the left hand side. What do we have? We have y times sine two x. So we will use the product rule. Derivative of y is y prime. Derivative of uh, times sine two x plus y times derivative of sine two x. Let me make this clear. This is y prime. Okay, derivative uh, y times derivative of sine two x. Well, derivative of sine is cosine times the derivative of two x, which is two. This is the chain rule equals. And the right hand side also I have product. Derivative of x is one times cosine two y, then plus x times derivative of cosine, which is negative. So I will write the negative here, okay? Negative sine 2y times the derivative of 2y. That's using chain rule. Derivative of 2y is 2y prime, okay? So that's the first step to find the derivative of this equation. And then to solve this equation for y prime, all the terms of y prime should be in one side. So I have... This term has y prime, and this term has y prime. So I'll take this term to the other side. So I'll have y prime sine 2x. Then this minus would be plus, and I have 2y prime. I will write it first, then times sine 2y okay, equals. I have cosine 2y in this side, and I'll take this term to the other side. So I'll have negative, I write the two first, so two y times cosine 2x. Now, all the terms with y prime in the left-hand side, so I can take y prime as a common factor. So I'll have sine 2x plus two sine 2y, and these two terms, uh, there is nothing to do here. And then I can find y prime finally, by dividing both sides of this equation by sine 2x plus 2 sine 2y. When I divide both sides by this, I'll have y prime alone in the left-hand side, and in the right-hand side, I'll have cosine 2y minus 2y cosine 2x over sine 2x plus 2 sine 2y. So this would be y prime. Find the horizontal asymptote. To find the horizontal asymptote, I need to find the limit when x approaches positive or negative infinity of the function 2x squared plus x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. And to find the limit when x approaches infinity or negative infinity, whenever you have a fraction like this, uh, fun of, uh, polynomial over polynomial, okay? A rational function, we call it. You can just take the highest power up in the numerator and the highest power in the denominator. And now you have x squared over x squared. You can cancel them together and you will have only two because x squared will be canceled with x squared. And then, there is no x here, so to find the limit when x approaches positive or negative infinity, the limit of 2 would be 2. So first you simplify, and then you take the limit. So the answer is 2, so the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equals to 2. Notice this is a horizontal asymptote, so it's a horizontal line. So the equation is always y equals. Find the limit here. Well, we know that the limit of sine x over x when x approaches 0 is 1. This is a fact. Okay, we learned this. But here I have sine 3t over sine t. So, in fact, I can do the following. I can divide 
by t up and t down okay so now i can distribute the limit i have the limit of the numerator over the limit of the denominator the limit of the denominator would be one because of this formula but the limit of the numerator i have three here inside sign but i don't have three below so I can multiply by three here and here. So three divided by three will be canceled. So I didn't change anything. So now I can write it as limit when t approaches zero. This three, I can take it out if I need, if I want. So limit sign three t over three t over limit. So I distributed the limit uh, up and down. And now using this formula, this limit is one. So three times one, and this limit is one. So the answer is three and the limit is three. Find the derivative using the definition. Well, the definition says that if the prime of X is equal to limit when H approaches zero of X plus H minus F of X, over h. So let us use the definition. So this is the limit when h approaches zero of, well, h is h, there is nothing to do here. But f of x plus h, well, I know f of x, this is f of x given in the question. So how to find f of x plus h? I replace this x by x plus h in this side. So f of x plus h would be equal to x plus h raised to the power two. So I replaced x by x plus h plus four. This is f of x plus h minus f of x. Well, f of x, there are two terms. So I will open parentheses. I will use parentheses. Continue. Now I need to expand. What is x plus h squared? The first term squared plus two the first term times the second term, hx or xh, it doesn't matter, plus h squared plus four, and they can also distribute the negative sign, negative x squared minus four. And usually when we deal with rational functions, we will find that all terms without h will be canceled. So four with negative four, x squared with x squared, and all the terms in the numerator have h in them, so I can take h as a common factor from the numerator. So I'll have 2x here from the first term and h from the second term. If you multiply h times 2x, you go back to 2hx and h times h, you go back to h square. Now you can cancel h with h and now you can replace, you will have limit h approaches zero of 2x plus h only. And you can replace h here by zero to get 2x. So the derivative of this function would be 2x. And of course, we know that the derivative is 2x, but this is the proof using the definition because he asked about the definition. Uh, well, I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, solving this exam with me. Uh, thank you very much.